And, and a good announcement. We, I don't have to tell you how desperately the world needs this right now. How fast will this get vaccines into arms and, and where will it go? How, how does it work? There are multiple things going on. One is the boosting of supply. So we announced t today an investment in uh, Aspen Pharmacom, which is Pharmacare, which is in South Africa, and we'll be able to boost the supply of Johnson and Johnson doses, which are those are very welcome in the developing world because they're a single shot. So that's 600 million uh, euros of, of an investment that we that we spread with other with other investors, notably the DFC in the U.S. Uh, and uh, and others, uh, and so that gets that boosts the supply. And then on the demand side, we've uh, reached an agreement with uh, ABAT, a, a uh, African Union entity, that will be able to deliver 400 million doses to Africans, uh, to African countries and Africans, which is single shot dose. That means 400 million people vaccinated. Uh, and those can start, we hope, within, I, I want to say, one month and two months. The, the production is already underway of those vaccines. So that's, uh, that's welcome. And w one thing that's happening is the, the recognition of more countries that they need the financing. You know, there was hesitancy in some countries so they, that they need the financing and that they're will be uh, supply available as the U.S. releases excess doses. Uh, and so, therefore, we yes. wanted to put forward more financing, and that, that can be used almost month by month by the countries to buy vaccines and deploy them. It, it really is a stark reminder, President Malpass, of just how unequal it is right now, the vaccination picture globally. Uh, give us a sense of, of where these inequities lie and, and how fast we can close the gap. It's a huge problem. Most of the growth in the world is coming from the advanced economy in China, uh, a lot of it the U.S. and China. And if you look at the uh, rest of the world, oftentimes there's 1 percent growth or 2 percent growth, you know, a bit of a rebound from that deep dive last year. But it means that GDP is is uh, an eight, nine, ten percent below where it was last year. That's devastating, and the the inequality goes to the vaccines. You know, they're just not available in a lot of the countries. We're trying to fix that. Uh, it also goes to the, uh, the 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 debt payments that are coming out of the countries. You know, the creditors hold most of the cards, uh, even for uh, relative to poor countries. The creditors can enforce their, their rights and they write really tight contracts. So that's, that's a, a, a big part of the challenge. And the biggest one is simply the growth is not equal in the world. So the people are just out of work in a lot of the developing countries. They want to work but there's not the job. So that's what we're up against. Who, who are the most unreasonable creditors? Which countries? Uh, yeah, you know, there, there are asset managers, but there's also what are sometimes called vulture creditors. They buy up the, the debt and enforce the rights through litigation. And so a, a challenge for the, for the uh, poorer countries uh, is uh, finding a way out you, you know, there's there's a conflict of interest. If you're the president of a country, you're willing to sign, or you're the prime minister, or you're the autocrat. You're willing to sign a contract, and then someone else pays the con the consequences of that years later. And that I think is a is an unfairness in the international system. There's no bankruptcy process for for countries for sovereigns, uh, and so they get into contracts that aren't good contracts, mm. and there's no way out uh, under the current system. And I'm looking for more avenues for the countries, the people of the countries, to be relieved of their debt. I guess my main question, President Malpass, is why, why has this taken so long to gather these resources and this financing for these vaccines, which many of them were, were approved in the U.S. late last year? I realize we had to wait for the production to get going, but you know, for millions of people in low and middle income countries, this is coming too late. We got an early start on it, approving the vaccines last year before the vaccines were even invented. So I'm happy with that. Uh, the, the, the slowness 
has been that the, the, the vaccines that were being manufactured were taken up by the advanced economies. They had a lock in terms of the options. And so it's been very slow to get them to release the vaccines to other countries. So even though our financing has been available ever since really October of 2020, uh, the, the countries have been unable to get uh, uh, contracts for supply. Uh, and the international system just hasn't worked in terms of matching the, the uh, type of vaccine with the countries that use that particular type of vaccine. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.